You guys have been challenging me to build a lot of piston doors. We've done circular ones, triangular ones, giant ones, small ones, pretty much all types of piston doors. In fact, I was planning on not taking any more door challenges. But then this one came through. A spoon-shaped piston door. I mean, how can I not give that a go? Now, obviously, the handle area is going to be really quite simple. We're just going to have a whole bunch of pistons and a whole bunch of pistons on this side, and that will open up our handle. The issue is that we actually have essentially a 4x4 volt door up at the top here that we kind of have to deal with. And I can't personally think how I'm going to do it just yet. Yeah, this could be a bit of a challenge. I think I've worked out a system to do it. I was originally considering using slime blocks like this, but then of course we've got that problem, which means that that would not have worked. So I imagine this will do the trick. So we have we have single piston extenders, then we have a double piston extender down at the bottom here. So this is essentially a four by four door circuit, and then this is a vault door circuit. So we need to grab all of these blocks and pull those back and pull all of these blocks back as well. Interesting. This is gonna be interesting. Except we've run into a slight issue. That piston right there will be visible from the inside of the door. Do I want that? I think maybe I'll try and design it with that in the wall, and then if it's easy enough, then we can try our best to make it completely seamless. But anyway, aside from that, stage one is completed. Our handle is opening and closing. I mean, technically we could just use that as the door. <laughs> no, that's kind of cheating. Trying to wire this thing is tricky, to say the least. We actually don't have that much space to work with. Uh, we're having to actually make use of this redstone dust right here to power this piston, and then this piston will retract that block back, which will then push this block in front of this redstone dust, so then we can actually get the double extension and retract. It makes sense, it does. We're gonna have to be quite crafty with this one. So just to reiterate, this line of blocks right here is the line of blocks that's going to be tricky, and I've done the first little bit of the retraction, almost. Apparently I haven't done my timings correctly. What we need to do is we need to retract this block, move it out of the way, so that we can make way for the double piston extension, which will be happening next. Right, let's give this a whirl. I've done some experimental bits out the back right here involving observers and things like that. And we're going to see... Okay, there's the extension, and... <laughs> so experimental that it absolutely doesn't work. And I've just worked out why. Okay, if I just run a repeater out from here and then adjust all of the repeater timings downwards, so that's down to two ticks, and that's down to two ticks, now we could be onto something. Let's give it another go. Essentially, the signal strength from our hopper right here wasn't strong enough. So if we just go like that. Too fast. Not enough delay. Hey, I've just done it. I was not expecting that to work at all. So we changed up some of the timings. I've added in an extra circuit down at the bottom here. We have the observer down there. And if we flick the lever, you can see that that extends out all of these blocks. And then the retraction is there. Now, of course, this piston down at the bottom here does get triggered by this redstone, but there's absolutely nothing we can do about that. We can't wire this in any different way. It has to be like that. But you can see that it does retract the blocks back, flush with the wall, which means that the piston heads are working. This is good. Now we just have to do the extension to push the blocks back out like this. But that is stage one, probably the trickiest part, all done and dusted. I think I might have come up with something here. So if we flick this, that was actually... <laughs> That was the that was the closing sequence or the opening sequence even. So now we have the items there. Now it's time to try the closing, and oh, that's not good. Right, let's try that again. And now that I've actually fixed everything up and hopefully have the timings correct, so this is going to be the opening real quick. Make sure that these are ironed so everything's looking good. You wouldn't have a quartz spoon, would you? So there we go. There's the opening. That still works absolutely fine. And the closing. Still makes a horrible mess, but it's a better horrible mess. We have things extending a little bit too quickly, so I'm wondering, maybe we change up this delay. In fact, that delay is way too big. Way too big. Now that should work, I hope. Lever. 
Yeah, we know that works. Oh, did you just see that? That was like clockwork. That was actually like clockwork. Does not get much better than that. That's about as fast as we could possibly go. <laughs> nice. Okay, so we have got the kind of tricky part down at the bottom here done. That doesn't mean that it's going to be easy because right now we also have to extend all of these blocks back to here as well. Which is a challenge. A little bit of a challenge, but something I have experience with because, of course, I've built a lot of vault doors in my time. Just quickly want to see what this thing looks like from the front. Oh, of course, I haven't actually connected up any of the redstone. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty interesting. Now I wonder if this will work as I want it to. Oh, not quite, not quite, not quite. And also, that observer is in the side of the door, which isn't brilliant. I suppose we could do it like that. Hey! <laughs> no, yes! Surely not! And if we just remove this, and make sure that this is... Ooh! That was a bit horrible. Uh, okay. So I guess that all works. We now just need to run a repeater input into this thing. And thankfully, we can actually do that due to the way that I've wired up all of this area. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. So the way that I'm going to send the redstone signal upwards is just by using a slime block with a redstone block on the top. That seems pretty good to me. So all of this is currently low. Ooh. Yeah, all of this is currently closed, which means that this guy right here should actually be up like this. And then we'll have our obsidian. That will take the redstone signal out here. And then all of this will extend. Might need a repeater running in on that one. So let's do this. Flick the lever. <laughs> there we go. And, ah. Come on, please. Why does that one extend first? We might need to add in like a slight... I mean, we can just add in these pistons here. That works. Oh no, except we have some redstone. We have redstone in the walls. This one isn't a big deal. We can run that up like this. But this one down at the bottom here is a bit tricky. Oh, how could we deal with that? How could we deal with that? Everything should now be fixed. Everything should now be working. We get the piston extension and the full piston retraction. All is well. Okay, now we just need to do the pistons on the top. We fixed up all of the redstone in the walls. This is good. This is really, really good. We're actually going to pull this off. I've taken the liberty of copy and pasting each side of the redstone contraption. So now this should be the full spoon door in all of its glory. It's a wonderful shape, I have to say. And when we flick this lever right here, you can see... Dad, I haven't connected up the redstone just yet. When I flick this lever right here, you can see... Oh! <laughs> After a little bit of fixing, now you can see that we have got... <laughs> a working system. That is one of my favorite piston doors I think I've ever built in Minecraft. That is the best thing ever. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love it. Thank you. Thank you ever so much to the person that suggested this on Twitter. It is, an, it is just a fantastic idea. It's a brilliant idea and it has come together very nicely. Yet another thing that I feel like I should build on the Hermitcraft server. But one thing that I can't help but notice is this thing is pretty large. I mean, it's five blocks deep. We've got a bunch of blocks on the outside right here. 
things could definitely be compacted in the redstone department. So I'm going to issue you guys a bit of a challenge. I want you guys to go away and try your best to build the most compact spoon doors. And if you can do it, then upload it to YouTube, send it to me on Twitter. I would love to see all of your de designs because I know that you guys are completely crazy with this stuff. You guys are ridiculous and you'll be able to make it absolutely tiny. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo and I'm out. I'll see you later. And as per usual, check out the latest film on the filming channel. It's a good one. It's all about the brain.